Okay, good day. Gonna go over a little bit. Um, probably gonna show you how I go from going from a, a, a catalog. All right, so we've already done a shoot. I've done a shoot with the model. And what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna go from a catalog, take their selections, do a quick edit and upload it out. So I'm gonna use Lightroom for this and use um, Photoshop, a little bit of Sprout Studio and and to show you the process I go through. This is not a right or wrong thing. I mean, there's probably things that could be better. And there's probably things that could do much worse, but just to show you what I go through. So at this point, I am going to share my screen and you should be looking at everything. Let me move myself over here. That way I can feel myself talking to you directly. So what we're gonna do, this is Jamila's uh, shoot. Um, first thing I do, I'm in Sprout Studio and in Sprout Studio, I'm gonna go over and look up um, and, and let me close out some of my uh, uh, Instagram and WhatsApp and stuff like that because I want to minimize, um, I want to minimize the amount of uh, memory that is being used, all right? So I want to minimize the amount of memory that's being used by the computer. So this is where we'll go through one tab. Most people who know me know that I would normally have like 37 tabs all over and open. And when you're doing the, the Zoom, it kind of reduces the amount of memory that your computer has and it slows down a lot of things. So we'll go in here, open up our gallery and all our pictures come up. The first thing I'm gonna do inside of Sprout, I am gonna to toggle the file names because I need to know what the file names are. I am gonna go zoom in because I need to go a little bit closer. And just to show you a little bit bigger on the screen as it all pops up, um, I'm gonna actually go through and she has already submitted her favorites. There are 11 images out there. And so these are her favorites. And what it allows me to do is that I can easily, I can write this down, make it a little bit easier for me, but I'm gonna write down the, the file numbers. And as I write down the file numbers, that allows me one time just to go in make sure that I have the right files. And, 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 and so um, some of these overlap. So you see that she has 38 and 39, right? And I think when she does 38 and 39, it's a matter of her not knowing, and I, and I could make an assumption here, but it's a matter of her not knowing which one she likes more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and actually probably make that choice for her. Um, I'm over here looking for a pen because I know that I had tons of pens sitting right here. So, and the one I poked up obviously didn't have any ink in it because I was writing on it a few times. So we go through, so she'll have 39.57. She'll have 40.25. She'll have 40.38, 40.39. And like I said, these two right here, they look very much similar to each other. And so we'll go into Lightroom and we'll sit back and we'll decide which one of those two that we'll pick up. Um, 4084, 4080, 4084. We'll scroll down a little bit more. 4087, 4106, 4114. 4178. And last but not least, that looks beautiful. But I'll put this back up at the top 3905. And for whatever reason, um, in case Brian never reads, watches this, for whatever reason, sometimes Sprout does that. And I don't know if it just goes back by the order that the actual client chose their favorites, but sometimes it puts the favorites at the end. And so what we really like, what she really got with this was like 10 images, and we'll end up giving her still 10 images. Um, now, when we look at uh, 4038, if they are that far off, and I'm looking at it now because the head position, then I'll probably just still go ahead and throw both of those in. So we'll clear out of here um, for right now, and we'll close that up. And so right now, I am in her, um, her folder, and I am looking at essentially everything that, she, that I sent to her. So we took 336 images. I sent out 
109 in the gallery, which is a lot, I know, but of all the different looks and locations we're at. And of those, she chose her favorite 10 and 11. So what we'll do right now, we'll just go through and we'll highlight those. Um, and this is gonna do kind of two different things. This is like a best practices thing for me. I'm gonna take those highlights and I'm gonna create a brand new gallery or in a grand, brand new catalog specifically of those images. And when I do that specifically of those images, it's because I just want to work in that catalog. I don't want to um, use up a lot of bandwidth. So, uh, and just to show you as we click these, hopefully this works every single time. So the next one we need is 3957. We'll click that. We'll need 4025. We'll click that. We'll need 38 and 39. 38, 39. We'll need 80 and 84. So we'll do 80, 84, 87. And then we're going to go to 4106, 14. So we go to 4106, 14. And I'm working on a PC right now. So when I'm working on my PC, I am actually holding control down. Um, uh, I remember back in the days, it used to be open Apple, but I think it's an uh, option uh, on the Apple. And then the last one I'm gonna do is 4178, which is this one right here. So these are the four, these are the 11 that she chose and that she wanted. And that's what we're gonna go from. So at this point, I am gonna go file, export as catalog, right? And as I export this as a catalog, I'm gonna go and create a um, select. And I'm gonna check export the selected photos only, the negative files, build and create, uh, include smart previews and include available previews. And I'm going to save that. It's going to export that. And as I'm waiting for it to export, right, this is the time and opportunity that I like. I know now when I close out of this catalog and I go to the next catalog that, hey, that next catalog, I'm going to have a lot less files because this catalog right now, I think has in the neighborhood of 140,000 files, right? And in Lightroom is weird with how it does its memory because when you open that, it'll keep the previews and stuff like that and not just the smart previews but like the thumbnail previews for a long time and it'll absorb up your um your memory until you delete that catalog or whatnot so sometimes i just would rather go go through that and make it a little bit easier for me to deal with so that's what we're going to go through uh just close out of that um catalog and going into a new catalog and just while i'm taking that time i'm going to open back up her uh, file just to make sure that I got everything that it looks exactly like what we just sent out. And I think it does. I think it looks exactly what we sent out. So here are the 10 images. And I'm just going to take one for right now. Um, let me see which one I want to use. And we'll start off with this one. This is, I, I like this one. So there's a couple things that we can do. Um, and I'll go into develop module. And as I go open the develop module, I've used this using Fuji settings already. So I'm not gonna change my color. Um, if I wanted to, I could do some change in color grading, but if I did that, I would probably do that in Photoshop, right? And, and I'll show you a couple of options of why I would do that in Photoshop. It has all my adjustments that I made already, right? Um, sometimes what I, and, and this is one of the things, I know I'm jumping all over the place, but this is one of the things when it comes to um, using a high uh, high megapixel, high sensitive sensor, you'll see sometimes what they call more. And, you know, like I said, you only really worry about it when it comes to printing. But I know a lot of people go online and they see the more the, the, the more factor right there. So um, just be aware of that, that that can come from uh, the sensor itself. So I'm not gonna do anything too much to this. I just wanna make sure. So this is something that I may or may not do. <coughs> so 
I almost guarantee that in the next shot that my upright, if you look at the building, how the building is slanted. So I may want to do, I'll do auto upright, first of all. And this puts the building to be more um, architecturally sound, but you see that it fills up the frame. And, I, and I'm like, you know, I don't want the frame to be that filled up. Like, yes, I would love the building, like these to be straight. Um, but those are one of those things to where I may just do that. Um, let me see if I can do that and make it straight. And now I see like, now I feel like she's, she's tilted forward. So I'll go back and I still like that better. You know, um, this one I may, this one I may turn around and tilt forward like that. So she's very much more aligned with this shot. And this is the goal for all of them. The same thing with this one right here, because this is a series. And like this, this one, I'll go here. She doesn't jump that much. She does jump here. So when she does that, it's really about her. That's where I said, like, I don't want her to jump. So now she jumped to the side. Bring her down a little bit. Just a little bit more. And we, like I said, we're trying to avoid the jump, but we're going to get the jump. So, and I know I can go back and do it, but I don't want to take up too much time of this video. So at this point, I can do a couple of things with this, uh, things that I can do here in Lightroom. And mostly what I would do here in Lightroom, I would probably go just a little bit on the shadows because I just want to put some little bit more, you know, relief like in the background and stuff like that, a little bit more detail in the shadows brings out. But um, if I came in here and I think I am in the Fuji negative chrome, um I, the other side i would actually use is and that's kind of what I, what I wanted to look at what does it look like in the negative high negative standard or negative chrome i'm going to keep it the chrome um the other one that i could have used was classic negative i think that has a little bit too much warm on there this is in palm springs i want to keep the palm springs feel a little bit saturated the saturated pastel blue i don't i can't explain it any other ways and the white so i want to keep that feel so since I'm gonna keep that feel, I'm not gonna change anything there. Take this, edit it in Photoshop, send it over to Photoshop. This is where we're gonna work things out. Things that stand out to me already in this shot, I, I wanna have a plan. I already know my building slanted, moving forward, backwards or whatever, but I'm not gonna really worry about that too much. I really wanna have a plan on what I'm gonna do. And the first thing that I wanna do is this area right here. Now there's a couple things I can do and I, I'll, I'll try it right live real time. Um, I can do a patch tool uh, where if I did a patch tool, I would turn around and cover this whole thing right here. Make sure that content aware, uh, that content aware is done and I can, do this right then i can come back and do this and then i'm gonna come back and take care of this and now that part of the actual um shot is taken care of control d to deselect and so now, because that, that shadow was killing me, now I took that one shadow out and wanted to take off all the other shadows. Another reason why I didn't want to um, change things is because I can actually do something like this. And let me see, I am gonna go free ratio, uh, let me see, original ratio. 
And what I want to do is I want to go. Um, oh shoot, I don't want to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and actually, I think I can take this off because what I don't want to do is I don't want to, um, it's cropped, but I don't want to lock the crop in. So as I go through and let me see if I can move some of this out of my way, um, the bar, because I want to do content aware, make sure that's checked. I want to actually, um, as I come through, it, it gives me the ratio. I don't really want to do a ratio. And I'm trying to see, I'm trying to remember where the cropping tool um, and pretty much what I want to do is something like this. So let me see if I can get it to work. And I really just wanted to extend um, before I actually did it. So I didn't want to actually make it wider. I just want to extend. Um, and I'm going to see if it lets me do it. If it doesn't, uh, I'll figure it out on the back end. Uh, sometimes I do this so many times, I don't really go into Photoshop a lot. So that's the reason why this is not a tutorial. Uh, this is what I actually want. And so this is not what I want. This is what I want here. But I am trying. So, OK, well, I'm going to go this different way. I am going to go into. Um, Uh, this way. Shoot. Let me go back to ratio. Let me go back to original ratio. We're going to go here. We're going to keep this. And what I want to do is um, I want to unlock. And there's a way to, 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 to unlock it. I want to unlock my actual crop. Um, and the reason why I want to unlock the crop, because I just really want to, there we go. That's all I want to do. All I want to do is just extend this a little bit. And I don't know why I was doing, I guess, I don't know. I guess because I probably had ratio on and I had actually had it locked. So that's probably why it did that. But that's kind of where I want to go to. I want to go more along those lines right and as i go along those lines i think that kind of helps me out a little bit um, i'm trying to add more light a little bit there so so yeah as long as i go along those lines i think that is what i am looking for so now i have a little bit more room to play with later on and that looks a, that looks a lot better um, that's something that I can work with. I don't know what the, the ratio to this is right now, but that is something that I could work with because when I go say, okay, I want to do crop again, and I am just going to go like this. Now I should be, and I think that's straight up and down, right? I think that's just about straight up and down on the background. Now, when I go th this way, it should give me a lot more room to play with. And so we'll see what the content aware does on that. Okay. Now that looks better. That looks to me much better, even though she's leaning forward into the sun. The building looks a lot better, um, a lot more uh, controlled, right? And so, um, but I'm still going to, I still like the building leaning back. I just like that better. So I'm going to leave that there. At this point, I'm going to go through, change my um, spot healing brush, bring my pixels down to about six, right? Five, six, seven works, but I, I bring down that low because what I'm look, looking for is, I'm looking for places that I can actually um, make an impact. Like this right here, like if it's not a beauty mark, if it's just like, you know, maybe a, a skin blemish, right? Um, 
if it's just a skin blemish, then it is okay. You know, like that's kind of why I, I like doing the smaller pixels because especially like, you know, if you, somebody has like, you know, hair bumps or just a, a little minor skin irritation or it's even dry skin. Sometimes, you know, um, somebody will do a shoot early in the morning and, you know, it, it, you, you have your content or wear tool. It's going to try to make it a smaller, the, the tip, the more realistic it comes and it doesn't necessarily look like you're actually airbrushing and cloning tools. Um, I would look over her pants and stuff like that. You know, in this road, I know that it's different, but I'll go over this a little bit bigger just to get that out. Um, little things that, you know, I, while I do want the, the natural grit of the road, I don't necessarily want everything in there that just doesn't, does, doesn't help with the shot. And that's kind of why I'm like some of the stuff I'm taking out. Like even some of this right here, like I don't need those, uh, I don't need these um, light markers. And so at that point, and even if I went like this, let's see if it works, right? Just take off, like I don't like that because that just messed it up. And that's the things that you gotta learn sometimes in Photoshop is like, you know, it's not an end all be all, but you know, and this is when you like what I just told you about using a big brush. Um, you use a smaller brush, and I do all the I'll do all of this and be like, you know what? I will leave them all back in. All right. Like after all of that, I'll leave them all back in because I don't want to go through all that trouble. All right. So um, what else am I looking in the background? I'm looking for anything that could be distracted in the background. The car is okay. The Range Rover. Could have swore I saw a sign. The dog bowl is okay. Um, something like this. I'll leave. Right. I mean, that you probably wouldn't notice it on a big picture blown up. Um, something like this. And my pen should, my, 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 what's the name should be smaller. I'm not even gonna lie and say it shouldn't be my, my um, actual uh, point should be smaller. All right, there's no people in the background. Nobody's on the balcony having sex or anything like that. Um, you'd be surprised of uh, what you'd find on balconies. And so now the shot itself, um, and this is one thing that you can or can't do. I, I don't know what the, the rule is on this, but you know, some people say, like you know, because of the address, take the address out, just leave the building. Um, some people say leave the address in there because uh, you're not doing anything wrong. Um, so to me, it's just like I think at that point, you know, does it make the shot worse? Does it make the shot better? I don't. I don't think it does anything different. But I'll take it out, and now we have our shot. So at this point. I'm not going to mess around with anything else in the background. Um, let me look at her face because I looked at everything but her face. I am not going to mess around anything in the background. Her neck is looking good. Uh, we got some. And, and she, she has really good skin, so in general. And because she has really good skin, you want to minimize any kind of corrections that you're doing through her. And, and if I look like I'm going off a little bit, this is the reason why I do small, is because... I am using a mouse. I'm not using my Wacom tablet. Um, I should use my Wacom tablet. It's just been so long since I've used it. All right. And it's just like, you know, and, and you know, one of the good ways to practice with a Wacom tablet and is to, or Wacom, but I think it's Wacom. I think it's Wacom, is to play solitaire with it. I mean, like, that's a really good way. So at this point, I think. Yeah, she doesn't have no boogers up her nose. Teeth look good. Skin looks beautiful. And at this point, this shot is 99% where I want it. Um, that's the goal of when you actually shoot it. You want to get it at least 80% when you shoot it and then get to the 90% on the first pass. I will do control J. I will create another layer, right? This layer is going to be my body manipulation layer. For me, that's how that works. And so when I go to my body manipulation layer, I am gonna use the Portrait Pro body. 
This is not a tutorial on how to use Portrait Pro Body, but it's just to say that this is a tool that I use and that I'm gonna use it for this. If this slows down a little bit, it's because the Portrait Pro is loading up, um, some of the resources that come out of it, but I enjoy what it does, right? Um, both the body and the Portrait Pro Professional works really, really, really well, especially in small doses. Um, it's not a forget, uh, a fire and forget type thing, but it, it works pretty good. So like this right here, it'll come up and it'll look for her body, right? I said that it's a woman. Just to show you some of the real things that it does, her body is pretty much perfectly in spot, so I don't have to make any kind of changes. What it does is it shows you her knees. What it says is her legs. There's a good kind of contour, so I'm going to accept this. It's going to find this. Now, one thing I like about Portrait Pro Body and why I use the Portrait Pro Body, even on something like this, because because I'm only going to maybe touch one minor area, right? Is because a Portrait Pro Body does good skin retouching on the body itself, and it doesn't get too heavy. Um, just to show you what you can do, it'll do curves like that. I'm not going to change her curves, right? I actually like her curves. Um, it can make her. It can give her a, a, a lift. I'm not going to change that, right? Um, it can make her taller. And for some people that, that works out well, what I am going to do for her, I am actually going to go to the shape tools and I'm just going to go a little bit on the shape tools just to bring this in. That's it. That's it. That's all I'm doing. And I'm not doing a lot. Um, I'll, yeah, and I'm probably right there, just to bring that in a little bit. Uh, and that's about it. I don't want anything too heavy. Um, I could go back up to the shape sliders and like her legs. If I wanted to make her legs thicker, I could, but I'm not. Like I said, I, I like her how she is. So at this point, I go out. And really, like I said, it's just position, right? So at this point, I go out, I go back into Photoshop. And once I go back into Photoshop, it's going to allow me to see where the, the subtle differences are. And understand, like, so this is where this fog gets really heavy. If you're watching this, um, I shot this with a Fuji GFX 100S. This is a 200, uh, yeah, 200 um, megabyte type file, right? It's 102 megapixel, 200 megabyte file. Why this is important to know is because once you start doing all this, it goes into the TIFF format. It's not just a regular PSD. It's going into a TIFF format back and forth. And why this is so important, you can see right here at the bottom where I'm at uh, 626 megs, but this image that, that with the resources I'm calling for right now are literally 1.2 gigs. So this is a huge image as itself. And if you can see my rulers, if I was to print this image out right now, natural, raw as it is, this is a, a 36 and a half by 55 print as it is. So this is a huge, this is a huge image, right? But just to show you what the difference was, that's just the difference. That's all. Didn't do much, just that. And I like that change. It still gives her nice curves. It still makes, it still shows her body. I didn't have to mess with her shadow that much because I'm not messing with her actual curve curve. I'm actually just bringing in just a little bit, just tucking that a little bit of tummy tuck, right? But I, I want her to still look beautiful and gorgeous as she is. So then I will create another layer because like I said, this is tips. So now when I created that layer, you see it says 1.83 gigs. So we're almost at two gigs on this one image. And that's the reason why like, I, I stress so much um, having a plan when you come in. This image right now, like, like I said, it was good as it was to begin with. Um, but I just want to use this as a training tool. So now I may go into another filter. We saw me use Portrait Pro. Now I'll go into the other side. Now, Portrait Pro, I'm not expecting to do a lot with this image, and I may not even keep the adjustments that it makes because right now I am good with the image. I am going to go to Portrait Pro, though, see what Portrait Pro does, and then on top of that, I'm going to go from Portrait Pro 
to use my exposure seven, right? You know, and just to see what a little bit of color grading does to that. And if I like the color grading, usually I use the color grading more for like nudes and stuff like that. But if I like the color grading, because this is this gives me still palm desert, it still gives me the bright pastel. But if I like the color grading, I will save the color grading for it. Um, but I wanted you to see this this kind of whole uh, workflow, all right? Right now, because the angles that she's at, it says that it can't find her. So I am going to uh, manually locate face, click on nose, right? Click on chin. It should zoom in a little bit, right? It's locating the face. And now it says it's male, but I'm gonna say it's female, right? It's select and it's gonna actually have me actually point out individual pop spots. On a more frontal face, it will automatically detect it. And it's funny what it considers male versus female versus child because it uses things as far as like this, I think an algorithm as far as skin, it uses jaw outline. It uses a lot of different things to, to figure out which is which, right? Um, but on the, the back side of the algorithm, it does it to the point to where it is about like, how does it, how much is it retouch? How much does it adjust? Um, and doing that. So right now I'm waiting, right? Like I said, because it's a huge file. Um, I should have probably used one of my Nikon files for this. This is a huge file. This I I'm, I'm got three layers deep, but it's actually using one. It's actually using one. Um, I'm actually having it do something that it normally doesn't do. And it is trying to adjust the face. It's trying to figure the algorithm out for this. And so it is taking a while because normally it would have uploaded and done. I may cancel it. Um, I'm going to give it about maybe another 20 or 30 seconds. I may cancel it if it doesn't do it in 20 or 30 seconds, um, which is, which is uh, uh, interesting because um, and, and, and when I say this, because I'm also on Zoom as well, right? So I'm also using the webcam and, and showcasing my screen and sharing everything. And I think uh, all of that absorbs a lot of the resources because it's stuck on 4%. And usually it is still even with this, um, it is normally much faster just to give uh, an expression of what I'm using on this rig. I am using a... Um, I buy per hour uh, off the shelf um, uh, desktop, a PC, 12 gig RAM, uh, no, 12 gig video card, 64 gig RAM, um, solid state, everything else. So it's not a, it, like, like I said, it's not a, a, a thing. Um, but I don't, I'm, I don't even have to deal with this right here. I'm just going to see what. It, and th this is where you're trying to bring this stuff to. Reason why, because I don't care, I'm not gonna have it change the shade. I just wanna do the skin smooth a little bit and I'll tone that back. Um, and then I'm gonna turn off the eyes because I just wanna make sure there's no ghost figures on there. And then from this, I'll zoom out because that's all I want. All I want is just a little bit of skin retouching on this. Come back, it'll save the image. The image will save a lot more or a lot faster than what it did before. So it come back, it'll save the image. We're gonna send this image back into Photoshop and you'll see how, how big the images got from that point. So we'll send the image back into Photoshop. It's at 100%, it should come up anytime now. And, and this is the reason why I can't do a whole selection during the videos, because if I do a whole selection during the videos, it, it literally, uh, it'll take forever because of, how big these files are. Um, maybe if I shoot back with a Nikon and stuff like that, uh, I will probably, or Nikon for my international friends, I will probably be able to, to do that. But um, so here is where we were at. All right. So now you probably can't see this, but, and so let's go zoom in on what is actually being done, right? And we're going to zoom in on what is being done. And usually it just has to do with the lighting, right? So like, so I will see, and I don't, I don't like that ghosting that's on there. So I will actually delete that later, right? She's beautiful as she is. But I just need to see it. One, one more layer, all right? So Control-J, one more layer, 
we are going to go into exposure seven. This is one of those nice to have layers. Um, like I said, this image is perfect for me as it is. It's, it's, it's not a, a bad image, all right? So it's perfect for me as it is. Um, but I just want to see what kind of color grading that I wanted. And you, you know, if you see it pops up, you'll see uh, that's a nice color grading. Um, you know, these are giving you old and nostalgic, you know, type figures. I'm not going to color grade this at all, I don't think, because there's nothing like maybe this one would have been, but it's a little bit too bright. I can bring this down. Um, but there's nothing that I see out here that really, really, I, oh, I like this one. This one is beautiful. It gives it like a 1970s feel. And if I'm going to print this one and do a collection, um, especially with a swimsuit, I would probably do this. Um, yeah, I would probably do do this look because this look like now. So this is where it comes back as I look at this. This look does not give me Palm Desert. This look gives me Miami. It gives me 1970s Miami, and I love it. 1970s, 1980s Miami. I'm not going to use it though. All right, so we'll come out, and as we come out, there there we are. I'll open up one last thing and I will go into my pro panel tools. For me, I like to hit it with a little bit of, uh, Scott calls it uh, Orton, right? I like this look. So now here I can control how, how deep this is gonna be on my contrast. I don't try to go too heavy handed because I just want, like I do, do a little bit just to see. And there, like, I like that right there. And at this point, it goes up and it will be something where I go back, I'll do about 5%. And so now this is my shot. So if we wanna see where we are at versus where we started. This is where we started. So you can see the subtle differences there, but we came over, tucked in a little bit, and we went right here. And that is where we were at. So now at this point, control S, and it's gonna save. I'll close this out after it saves. It's gonna save, we go back into Lightroom. And while I'm looking at Lightroom, here's the original one, all right? And I want to see, want to show you this popping up. Um, so while I'm in Lightroom, it will come back up and let's see where it says at this point, uh, anytime now. I probably should have had the Photoshop, but here it comes and you can see the change. So now here is the after, here is the before, the after, the before. Um, let me see if I can, uh, and it says drag and drop into there just to show you the difference hopefully i'm not in the way but just to show you the difference um of where we're at oh, let me see that's the reference All right so this is where we this is where we're at this is how we started and those are the two uh images pretty much right and like i said it's just a little bit just a little bit you know like things like this, that's gone, right? And I don't know why it, it's not as sharp as it was before because you can see the sharpness. So I just only think that it's because of what it's actually doing. I'll get out of there and go back to my loop mode because my loop mode now is sharp. I go back to the other one. My loop mode is sharp. And she looks beautiful. So that, and at this point, I would export or print, or I would print off Photoshop, 
At this point, that's what I would do. So then I would export this, send it back to the client. Um, just real quick, you got to understand too what a client may or may not do. So if they're going to put on Instagram, this is how an Instagram post may, may look like, like something like this, right? You don't want that. Well, let's say they do a four by five because Instagram does support four by five. That's not too bad. That looks good. And that's where you may see actually on Instagram. Um, if you wanted a 16 by 10, which that looks good as well. So if you're gonna do your, your Insta stories, that's what you're gonna see. And so this is where um, I would always, always, always just know, keep that in mind and what they're gonna do. And now if I did wanna go back to, this is a new one, go back to autocorrect. Now I can go to that point to where Okay, now it's straight up and down, and it looks a little bit more better. I still like, like I said, I still like that though. I still like that. All right, with this one, I I, I hope that you learned something. I hope that this was helpful. Um, this is what I would send my client. I am going to actually send her a copy of this tonight. And uh, like I said, I hope this was helpful for you. So with that, uh, like a fat kid in dodgeball, I am uh, out. I I. I think that's how uh, we do this. And so I will stop recording now.